Kima Media's Mining Weekly is interviewing Paul Miller, the founder of Uchalo, an enterprise that connects investors and companies to capital. Paul, it's great to chat to you once again. What is the potential for companies needing capital investment to achieve the same success that the Johannesburg Stock Exchange listed Orion Minerals has achieved in raising more than 44 million rand, mainly from smaller South African shareholders? Look, um, that's an open question, Martin. I think we have to recognize that South Africa has had a long history of inclusion in the in the financial markets. You know, there's a whole generation of investors who grew up investing in new mines, participating in capital raisings. Many of them are aging now. We've had about two decades where there hasn't been much activity in that front. There's been significant change to the way our savings industry is structured. There's been a significant change to the advantages that the regulators have given to large funds and how they've discriminated against individual investors. But if anything, the Orion Minerals process has taught me that ordinary South Africans do want to own shares directly. It was amazing what response we got from the market when we went out there to link up really with existing Orion shareholders. And in a comment on LinkedIn, Uchala said Orion's share purchase plan, it's SPP, shows what is possible on the South African public markets. Is that only for companies like Orion Minerals, which is primary listed in Sydney and secondary listed in Johannesburg? Well, no, Orion brought the innovation to South Africa, but I don't see any regulatory impediment for why very similar transactions couldn't be done in South Africa. So we quite used to, in South Africa, having what we call accelerated book builds. That's when the company appoints an advisor, the advisor contacts the institutions, generally a couple of phone calls out to Cape Town, the money's raised overnight, um, and it's announced the following morning. And that's done in terms of the general authority to issue shares for cash. Now, we make no distinction in regulation or law between institutional investors and retail investors. So retail investors are excluded from participating in accelerated book, book builds very much for reasons of practicality and convenience on the side of the advisors and the companies. So if we can challenge that and we can say, look, there's no regulatory impediment, you can do your accelerated book build, but offer your existing shareholders a share purchase plan, the Australian style share purchase plan, so that they can have the same opportunity on the same terms in a practical time scale. And that's effectively what Orion has taught us. They say, well, you can do it in South Africa. Remember, if you make an offer to your own shareholders, it's not an offer to the public. And, you know, although the primary listing is in Sydney, what do you make of more than 33 million rand of the 44 million rand raised coming from South African shareholders? Well, again, it was an illustration for me. Not only has the structure of how we manage savings and how we've squeezed private portfolio investors out of direct investment, how that's changed to be challenged significantly by the likes of easy equities, I have to say. They've got, a, they, you know, they've got over a million account holders now. So it's further emphasis on the fact that ordinary South Africans want to own shares directly. But at the same time, it's the media environment that's changed, Martin. You will remember when you got all your business news out of the newspaper first thing in the morning, and there might be a full-page advertisement in there for a new offer by a company. Now, there's no equivalent anymore. There's no single source of information anymore. So it was our efforts to reach those investors in a new digital way that I think assisted Orion with its placing, and, and the market responded. The market responded, when you give people the opportunity to participate, they might well. We can't really say that we failed to raise money from retail in South Africa because we haven't tried. And I hear someone who came along, tried and got it right. And Uchala have a platform that has about 750 investors on it. Could this signal a potential reawakening of South Africans to public markets? The, the potential's always been there. It's just that the the, the imagination hasn't existed in our advisory community on how to reach those people. Now, we've tried to fill that vacuum, and we've been amazed at how many people are still signing up. 
So the offer closed on the 23rd of July. We've still got investors coming in, signing up on our website and, and effectively saying, putting their hands up and saying, if you've got any future offers, let us participate. And what more can be done to bring smaller South African shareholders to market? I'm hoping that we will be able to bring more opportunities to investors. So I encourage people to head over to our website and sign up so that they can participate in those. So that's one thing that can be done. But also we need our regulators and the market itself and the exchange operators to appreciate that we need a diverse investor body across institutions, companies, charities, trusts, and individuals all making independent decisions about buying and selling shares on the stock exchange. We cannot give up and go to a situation where 10 major financial institutions manage more than 90% of all savings, and we have less than 100 companies on the, on the stock exchange, which is the trajectory we've been on for the last 15 years. And, you know, most people agree that it's economically important that South Africa's mineral endowment and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange must be joined at the hip. What is in the way of this being achieved? The penny has not dropped with the financial regulators, with the exception possibly of the South African Reserve Bank, that there's a problem if you over-concentrate the buyer on the, the buy side in your stock exchange. And that for smaller companies, particularly those out of the top 100, they need a diversity of smaller investors, small institutions, hedge funds, individuals participating in the market. That penny hasn't dropped. So I think it's important that while we show progress, we still need to lobby and campaign for our market regulators to take the same kind of steps that have been taken in other dynamic markets like Canada, Australia, and the UK, where individual investors are given the, the credit they deserve as an important participant in the smaller end of the stock exchange. And finally, Paul, what, in your view, is the main point that viewers, listeners, and readers must take away from this interview? I think they must realize that they have agency and they are perfectly entitled to participate as the public in our public markets and that they need to sign up. And I'm not suggesting everyone put their entire pension fund into smaller companies on the stock exchange, but to have a, a stake in the economy, to have an interest in the companies that are operating, to to be a participant is actually important, especially as South Africa transforms and changes. That was Kino Media's Mining Weekly, speaking to Paul Miller, the founder of Uchalo, an enterprise that connects investors and companies looking to raise capital.